his father. I'm asking a person who's got four fathers, what do you call him in your colloquial language? Tell me. Abraham is his father, David is his father, Joseph is his father, God is his father. A person who's got four fathers in, in London, what do you call that guy who's got four fathers? You think he's got four fathers, what do you call him? Huh? What do you call him? I won't say it. He says, no, 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 it doesn't mean that. Of course it doesn't mean that. I accept it doesn't mean that. So he tells me, the Christian, he said, you see, he comes from that noble family of Abraham. I said, right. He comes from the uh, royal family of David. I said, okay. He's supposed to be the son of Joseph the carpenter. I said, okay. But he is the son of God. I said, okay, that's the way you put it. But the Bible doesn't say all that. It says the son of Abraham, Abraham is his father. Son of David, David is his father. Son of Joseph, Joseph is his father. Son of God, God is his father. A man with four fathers. So I said, you see, this is how the religious language, you speak like that. But we can't take things literally. Ukhta Harun doesn't mean that her brother was Harun, Musa's brother. No, no, no. And maybe there could have been a brother. She could have had a brother called Harun. But no, no. I said, this is coming from that noble family of Musa and Harun, of the Nabis, the prophets of the Bani Israel, and so on and so on. So, my dear brother, I'm glad. But I think you gave me a very big task. You see, one question, and that had to be about half. I don't know, I must have missed out some, but let's give somebody else a chance. Somebody else a break. Anybody else? Come forward. Uh, my name is Don Sking, and I, I'm a Christian in search of a lot of things. You, 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 you use the term Last Testament for the Quran. Correct. And God has revealed to himself to us since the beginning of time. Is... God going to reveal to himself, himself to us again? Um, will there be any unification of the children of God according to the Quran? Yes. You see, when we say this is the last testament, it's nothing new. Because Jesus Christ, before he parted, he told us that beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are raving wolves. Beware of false prophets. But there is a way of knowing false from the truth. How? He didn't say there will be no prophets after me. I am the last prophet. Muhammad said that he is Khatum al Nabi and he is the last and seal of the prophets. Jesus didn't say any such thing. He said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. He said, by the fruits ye shall know them. How will you know the truth from the false? By the fruits. So he is telling you, there will be false prophets, beware of them, but there will be also true prophets, and by the fruit you will be able to judge them. Then in the first epistle of John, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. You remember that, sir? Many false prophets have gone out, meaning the false prophet is a false spirit, the true prophet is a true spirit. Now, how do we know the difference between the two? The false and the true. How do we recognize them? It says, the spirit, meaning the prophet that confesseth that Jesus is the Christ, is of God. This is the test. If you must know whether this man, whoever is claiming to be a prophet, is he a true prophet of God, ask him, do you believe in Jesus? So, I said, open the book. Yeah, if you like, I open it for you, and I'd like you to read it to the people. What the Quran says. It says, Is qalatil malaikatu ya Maryamu. Behold, the angel said, O Mary, inna allaha yubashiruki bi kalimatim minhu. Allah gives you good tidings, glad tidings of a word from him. Is muhul masih. His name will be the Messiah. Translated Christ. So the spirit that confesses that Jesus is the Christ is of God. This is the test, test given to you in your own holy book. I said, why don't you apply it to Muhammad? Then Jesus told us, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, I will send him. He's talking about somebody other than himself, whom he calls in John 16 again, the spirit of truth. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, 
But what, thing, what things what so shall he hear? That shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Who is he talking about? A spirit, a ghost, a spook? No, he's talking about a man. If I reread that again with a little emphasis on the pronouns, you can see he's talking about a man, a man, a man, and not a ghost. He says, nevertheless, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. But what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Eight masculine pronouns in one verse. It ill befits a ghost or a spook. He's speaking about a man, a man, a man, and it is applicable. It fits Muhammad like a glove. We can discuss this in detail, each and every aspect of the prophecy. Word for word, it fits Muhammad. But prejudices die hard, and I'm prepared to have a dialogue with my brothers. At the hotel, I'm open, come along after the closure of the meeting, and we can talk till tomorrow morning. I give you that facility, or anybody else who want to come and see me at the hotel, you're most welcome. Uh, the other two questions are somewhat related. The first one, uh, the lady says that uh, there is a, a Christian woman who wants to, who is near to embrace in Islam. And she wants to know why, according to the Quran, God took Jesus up. Uh, she wants to know uh, whether God will send him back in the end, Yamul Qiyam, I presume. Um, isn't he the one who will save us in the end? Uh, the question I think you have heard about why did God take him up? To save him from an ignoble death on the cross. Here is an innocent man. He's crying to God for help. As the Bible says, being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as if it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. An innocent man crying to God for help. And he went a little further in the Garden of Gethsemane, and fell on his face and prayed to God. He said, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me, meaning remove the difficulty from me, but not as I will, but as thou wilt. He's crying to God Almighty to save him. And he said that which man is there of you who, if a son asks for bread, will give him a stone, will ask for fish, will give him a snake. Does God do things like that? Man does. He's sadistic at times. You know, he does silly things you can't imagine. No animal does what man does. But he's trying to say that, look, people, human beings don't do that. Your son asking for food, bread, you give a stone. He's asking for fish, you give him a snake. How much more the loving Father in heaven, that God Almighty is crying to God for help, and God says, go to hell. No, God doesn't do things like that. So according to our belief, God saved him from an ignoble death on the cross. And he's coming back. I said, what is he going to come and do? Islam is a complete religion. Allah tells us in this book, the last and final revelation of God in the last testament is this day I have perfected for you your religion. And I have completed my favors unto you. And I willed that Islam should be your religion. When a thing is complete, when it is perfected, any addition is a monstrosity. Look at my hand. Alhamdulillah, you know, it's a normal hand, like most of you. But suppose we added another finger. Will it improve it? Will it improve my hand? Another finger. Put another thumb or make it ten fingers. Will it be any better? No. Once a thing has reached perfection, you don't need anything to be added to it. So what is he going to come and do? What will Jesus come and do? The Quran tells us. Wallah, the Quran tells us. As it is mentioned no less than 25 times in the Quran. That on the day of judgment, God Almighty will question him. So, oh Jesus, did you tell your people to worship you and your mother besides Allah? Did you? 